下手くそな飲みすぎて酔いつぶれただけみたいテニスコートに来そうなど鋭い推理のスマッシュ決めろ。to the third installment of the Project Sunflower series. So last time, I told you about my thoughts on what would happen in scene two, and maybe a little bit more about Lucien. But since then, I have finished writing scene two. Yay! So now I can talk to you about what happened in that scene and think about what would happen afterwards. So that's sort of like my goal for this writing session. I do have a vague idea, but then again, as I'm a discovery writer, we'll find out more about what happens once I get there. So here's what the current spreadsheet looks like. As you can see, I now have a total of 2,966 words, which I kid you not, is a huge achievement for me. This is because in the past I've always just started writing, but never really managed to follow through until I get enamored by another shiny new idea and pursue that. So this time I just wanted to focus and, and just get a first draft done. I don't know what will happen after that first draft, but, but for now that is like my primary goal. Anyways, just to keep you up to speed, I'm going to talk you through the scenes or beats now as I'd like to call them now as I write more to that rather than scenes actually. In the first beat, we immediately see the problem that Tala has. She sneaks out of her house at night to investigate a mysterious bubble that surrounds her town, shimmering and changing colors. So the mystery is not how it got there, but when actually, because everyone else in, in the town seems to think that the bubble has been there since the beginning. But Tala is sure that it had only appeared in the past few months. So in the second beat, she runs into more problems, but then tries to find a solution to those problems. So she, she decides to go to her favorite cafe, the Beams and Barley, to plan her day's missions. So Tala tries to ask the barista, Alex, about the bubble, so which is the, the mysterious phenomenon that appeared over their town around eight months ago, according to her, but of course, according to the townspeople, it's been there for a long time. But he dismisses her questions and leaving her frustrated and even more curious about its origin and purpose. Because of this obsession to unravel the mystery of the bubble and why she was the only one who noticed that it is a recent appearance, she decides to climb the church tower, which is next to the um, Fae, for a better vantage point. And then she discovers that the edge of the bubble cuts through a forest in the distance. So this is basically like the proof that this bubble is just a phenomenon that's in the town. So the, the problem is everyone else in the town not only thinks that the bubble has been there forever but also other towns have it as she found the proof that it seems to be only specific to their town she loses her balance and falls only to be caught by a magnificent bird a magnificent yellow bird with familiar blue eyes of course that bird like puts her down and leaves that's when it was found by her parents and the townspeople who were worried that she was on top of the tower which was actually also a forbidden place for anyone to be because of its high vantage. So yeah, that is where I am up to at the moment. Now I'm going to think about what will happen afterwards. For now, I told you I had like a vague idea as to what will happen afterwards. So one of the things that Tala noticed when she was being put down by the bird is that it goes into the direction actually where her own house is. So she thinks that bird is from around there, which is very convenient lives. So I guess in this scene, my thinking is that stumbles upon a house that is actually quite near her house and notices something strange about that neighboring house. She would approach that house and she would see an, uh, an older lady outside gardening. See, she would introduce herself and maybe add a little bit of you know, about the bubble in between, but this older lady might be hesitant to share any information. But Tala persists being the consistent girl that she is and to her surprise the lady actually believes and seems to understand what she is talking about yeah i think that's where i am going to think about the moment my thinking is that this lady and i already know the name of this lady she is definitely has something to do with with mysterious box so now i'm going to do some writing of the scene and then see what happens <laughs> Ok, 
so wow, that was certainly a very productive session. I managed to write 346 words. It's one of those sessions where it feels like I have a movie playing in my head and all I have to do was to write down what is happening in that movie. So I really love those kinds of sessions. It feels like I'm in the flow and imagination is running wild. Yeah, so it's, it's really fun and it's what makes writing fun. For so in this scene, we see Tala being restricted by her parents to go back to her favorite cafe as a punishment for the church tower incident. And of course, you know, she was also quite annoyed because that means she won't be able to have her favorite hot chocolate and blueberry muffin, but it didn't really matter to her as much. Uh, she knew that the next step for her was to look into the area where the bubble cuts through the forest and to investigate where the strange yellow bird that saved her went because she knew it was going to be only within the area that she lived, or at least that's what she had thought. Anyway, as she was doing that, she doesn't really notice that she has been sketching the yellow bird on her pad and this was noticed by an elderly woman who happened to be their neighbor who had moved in some months ago. So the name of this neighbor was um, Eden and that's that's where I'm up to. So in the next session, what I'm thinking of doing is to continue more about their interactions and maybe try and move the story along by revealing little bits of what is the connection between the bubble, the bird, and maybe this, this woman because we know this woman is also related to that. So otherwise, she won't be in the story, right? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so on to the next session. So in this session, I managed to write 240 words. It's a bit less than my previous session, but I was still feeling pretty productive and I was happy with that. So to continue on with the story, Tala is chatting with her elderly neighbor, Eden. So the interesting thing is that even though Eden looks old, she acts really young, kind of like one of Tala's teachers. Then Eden invites Tala into her house for a drink and Tala decides to take her up on this offer. So as they go inside, Tala starts asking Eden about the garden of her house because she notices that there's something strange about it. By strange meaning it actually looks almost too perfect. It's like seeing a painting of sorts or something that is just doesn't feel like it belongs to to reality. It, it's hard to describe but um, I'll try and find a way to put it in words in the next time. Uh, but anyway, that, that's sort of like the gist of it. And uh, one thing is that Tala even spots unusually looking butterflies around it. I mean, you know, she's learned what butterflies look like in school and they certainly don't look like them and they're fluttering around Eden's garden. Yeah, so it, it is intriguing. It's intriguing to me. I hope it's intriguing to you and I cannot wait to see what happens next. Um, but for now, I'm going to finish this writing session. So next time, uh, I'm hoping I can tell you more about what Eden says about the garden and what else happens while they're inside um, Eden's house. Thank you for sitting here with me and writing with me as I try and write this novel. To be honest, it, it's really been helpful because it really gets me and documenting this is making me, <laughs> is forcing me to stick to this particular story and not get distracted by lots of shiny, other shiny ideas and to try and see this through to the end. Uh, so that's all for today. Thank you again and I will see you in the next writing session. Bye!